from the back to the front. Header, header choice. So what's this one we've got? So we're on a super flow header in here. Um, uh, yeah, interesting. Um, we're, we're pleased with it. We, we didn't know um, whether we would be pleased with it. We, we, we've always had uh, sort of Vario, you know, extendable yeah. type standard headers before, but I'm actually, I was skeptical about the Superflow. I really, <laughs> I really was. It does look a bit different, I, doesn't it? It was, and you know they've been around for a lot of years as a power flow on a Massey. Yeah. Um, and I was skeptical, but actually, I find well, we're finding it really, really quite good. The way it does present the crop um, is significantly better than than headers we've had previous. Um, so we are we are pleased with it, but we didn't we didn't necessarily think we were going to. Uh, going to be pleased with it when it first came yeah. we sort of looked at it and thought oh more complication more issues more things to go wrong but um, we've had very little trouble with it um, at all and uh, and we, we definitely definitely think it's it's improving crop flow into the combine over over those standard sort of adjustable um, width headers that we've uh, that we've had previous yeah. so with the belt already being on the header it's actually quite a deep header it's already under it yeah it's yeah. quite a deep header to start with um, which you you notice when it's on the header trailer carting it down the road and squeezing it through gaps you have lost <laughs> you have lost just a foot or two of, yeah. of wiggle room with it being like if you like almost fully extended if it was a vario header um constantly so that that's a little bit more challenging just getting it through the odd gap but um but no it's uh, uh yeah no it's performed well in, in in all crops so far we find you need a lot less real input to keep mm. that crop coming than, yeah. than you probably did before you know we're we're, we're only brushing the top of the crop now, whereas yeah. previously you could, you know, the, the reel was almost an active part of the harvesting process of bringing that crop in, whereas now the belt's doing the vast majority of it, keeping it coming yeah. towards The us. reel's literally just tickling it. It, it? is, yeah. It's yeah. Like, so, come on, this way. <laughs> yeah, when it's nice on the headland, maybe before it was in a bit more, just as the crop's a little less even, sloping off to the edge. But, but certainly once you get in an even crop, like yeah. I say, you, you hardly needed any input at all from your... Uh, from your reel, it just keeps coming nicely with your belt. And then, yeah, moving up top, grain tank. But what's the capacity on this one? So they, tank -wise? they call it twelve and a half thousand liters, I think. But it holds seven and a half tonnish. I think we start to get a bit of cab corn if we go <laughs> if we go much over. If we go much over seven and a half ton. So I, I believe of the range, it's the smaller one. The the nines and tens, I think, have a bigger yeah. bigger capacity hopper, but. Um, again, it was slightly smaller hopper than our previous combine, which we, we were slightly concerned about. Mm. Having to, uh, you know, we, we, we always we never run more than two tractors and trailers, two 16 ton trailers with ourselves, and um, uh, we were a bit worried that we would be struggling. But um, we don't seem to have uh, don't seem to have struggled with that at all. So we're still still getting up to seven seven and a bit tons. So we're still filling filling 16 ton trailers into not full tank loads and. Uh, um, seems to be absolutely fine. And do you do any sort of mapping or anything like that? Yield mapping? Or? Yeah, so we're all uh, yield map pretty much everything, um, uh, and then that makes us help decisions later on mm. with with various parts of parts of other decision making, you know, and, and parts of fields we've got to look more closely at. So yeah, no, we, we do do yield mapping. Um, we use uh, Hutchinson's Omnia program, which is their own Hutchinson sort of pharmacy agronomy type company. Um, we use their their system, uh, which has been really good actually, because we've been able to take yield data from lots of different brands of combines going back lots of years and put them yeah. all on one platform. So we've got yield maps now going back a long way. It's been a really handy program for us to to build up years worth of yield maps, so we we know how how fields have performed over over lots of seasons for lots of different crops. And um, yeah, moving on to the cab now and the controls and layout. So uh, what's the combine like to set up overall and adjust? Uh, yeah, it's simple, simple really, simple. It's again, new new screen, new new sort of user interface to us, but no, no, pretty, pretty user friendly, um, simple menus and things to scroll through and then hotkeys on the side that we can do uh, we can do most of our adjustments without without going yeah, into so the like screen and stuff. Yeah, just straight yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, straight to it. So, so the majority of it we can adjust without really going into the screen. But even the screen itse itself is very simple once you get into various yield, moisture, temperature, calibrations, all that sort of stuff. You know, all all actually works works nice and simply, and all 
all pretty seamlessly uh, works in together. And the physical controls, how do you find them? Sort of. Uh, yeah, again, a different, slightly different driving style where your uh, joystick returns to centre mm. rather than your, your more traditional. So rather the proportional you, lever. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So again, just takes a little bit of adjusting to, um, but once you get onto it, it's, it, it makes very little difference. But actually. Again, a bit of a skeptic, seemed to be about a bit, a bit like that, about a lot of things about yeah. the header. But oh, that'll take some getting used to. I'm not, <laughs> not sure I'm going to like that. But you know, actually, you feel like you don't need to hold the joystick and grip it all the time to no. keep it in that. Once I know, I know exactly what you mean. Once you've yeah. sort of got it set, you know, you can just nudge it on, and then if you're not needing to touch anything, you can pretty much let go of it. Whereas your, your normal lever, I, I found you almost felt like you had to grip it all the time yeah. to keep it at the right speed the button layout on there as well yeah no I like the button layout again they they're sort of ergonomic the top ones tweak round so it sort of sits with how your thumb sits yeah. but actually again you know first few days you're always trying to press in between the buttons <laughs> rather than rather than across them sort of on the right bit but it all takes very little getting used to it does all uh, work okay so it all, it. all falls to hand in the end you just takes takes a few days like everything does just to get onto it we're actually up to 70 tonne an hour. Oh, 70 tonne an hour now. So, yep. We're away now. We're away now. <laughs> and from a practical point of view, you know, actually working on the machine, daily maintenance, things like that, what's it What's it like? Yeah, um, it, it keeps itself very clean. Um, we've been, we were told that, that it would keep itself very clean and we didn't believe them and we do now. Um, radiator basically doesn't need blowing out. The way it's like sealed in is, uh, very impressive got a reversing fan on it that keeps blowing out and you know we don't blow the radiator out which is absolutely bizarre on a combine but it doesn't need it really you, you go in there you have a look there's no point it is clean same with the air filter the way it actually sucks air we used to blow our um, filter out religiously daily if you blew this out daily you'd be lucky to get dust out of it we blow it out pretty much once a week and and you're getting less dust out of it after a week than you were out of a day on or other yeah. harvester. So, um, and certainly under side panels everywhere else, they've designed it quite cleverly, the way the sides slope. There's very few ledges for, for dust and things to actually build up and, mm. uh, and, and sit places. So it keeps itself, its body very clean. Greasing as well, daily grease points, uh, very, very few daily grease points. Speeds the morning service up, means we can get going faster. Um, so no, very few. Um, there's quite a few 50 hours, 100 hours, uh, 250s and 500s, but, but you know, on an actual daily basis when you're not doing the 50s um, quick, yeah, you know, there's, there's very few grease points around the machine to actually, to actually find, so it's just a matter of checking oils, um, quick blowdown, exhaust, engine, um, you know, high priority areas, quick blowdown around those, and let's get on. That's it. And then, just give us a word on sort of like, Kind of the, the drive line layout and the logic behind that. I mean, how does that compare to some of the other breeds that you've had and what's it like? Um, yeah, so generally, drive line's quite simple. Um, more belts than we've had on previous combines. So, previous combines had a lot more, uh, a lot more um, direct drives, gearboxes, uh, like splined couplings and shafts, um, which were great to start with. Uh, um, brilliant really low maintenance you know very little to do with them few grease points but no belts and we used to look under that combine and think this is fabulous you know there's so little going yeah. on really clean and tidy until the couplings the joints the shafts the gearboxes start to wear and then we start to have issues um, so now we look under this combine there's more belts than we used to and we look at a belt and think well if that belt goes we put another one on and uh, obviously this combines on tracks um, <laughs> How do you sort of rate the tracks and the track systems and the ride and things like that on this? Yeah, yeah, again, um, uh, they're a bigger footprint probably than previous than what we're on. They're a bit wider, but Massey have done a real good job of keeping the whole combine narrow. So we're on actually bigger tracks than we were, but we're on a narrower combine. So we've actually come in by sort of six inches, um, even though we're on bigger tracks. Yeah. So we've got a bigger footprint now for, for less width. So we're, we're down to three and a half metres. Uh, we do tend, we're on, We've got some relatively, you know, fast roads next to us, so mm. we, we try and escort the combine um, with a with a proper vehicle with a flashing light on it um, as much as we can. But actually, on smaller, quieter roads, 
it's, it's actually freed up a person being a bit narrower because we're now within the legal limit. So we feel on narrower, quieter roads, we can we can actually get a uh, we can get away with um, uh, with uh, with not escorting it with a truck. So it's just one less job yeah. for somebody to come out with a vehicle to get to the next field to escort it. And then yeah, just uh, sort of moving towards back to the car again. I mean. What sort of comfort like, noise like, visibility? That kind uh, of visibility, thing. yeah. So we've we've always been used to having um, uh, sort of a display on your corner post, mm. um, which never really seen that much of an issue. But now you've lost it, and these corner posts are really quite thin. You really it kind of opens it up. It, it does. It really does feel open, and you don't feel like you're really hunched over the steering wheel anymore. You know, I'm probably not sitting straight up, but. You, you feel like you can sit a bit straighter. You're not trying to peer around your, your your pillars. The pillars are that narrow. You feel like you can see, you know, round them well yeah. enough that you don't have to be trying to strain in front of them. Um, so I, I definitely feel that's an improvement. Final question then. Overall, sum up your time with the Massey Ferguson Ideal Eight Combine. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like I say, we're, we're we're not even done the first season yet, so it's. Um, you know, we've got to be we've got to be fair and honest um, about reviews and things. But but no, um, with what we've seen so far and, and the, the, the work we've done with it uh, and the backup we've had um, so far, I am I am happy. I am pleased. Um, um, I, I would recommend it. Yeah. There you go. Can't say further than that. Uh, no, I don't think so. But come back to me at the end of the fifth year, and I'll <laughs> I'll uh, I'll tell you. Yeah, what's this first I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's and all. Then we. <laughs> You know, you'll you'll be welcome back. Come back and see us.